Adam was, I think, the first person that I invited on this show. And he wrote me back (laughs) and he said, you should interview Cyrus and Robbie. And I said, okay, but I want you. And of course, he's so busy, right? So luckily, he's in LA now. So he's here with us in person. We are great. So I'm very excited. Adam, thank you so much for being on our podcast, Switch for Good. We're really happy. It's my pleasure. You're one of my favorite people. So Mm. I couldn't wait to be here. And I'm such a huge fan of yours, Dossie. And it's, it's it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm Thank really you. Excited. So, Super Adam, your story you. is really extraordinary because you you climbed out of such deep, dark depths to the place where you are now, which is such an inspiration. Can you tell us your story? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like like most stories, it starts at the beginning. You know, I'm a seventh generation Texan and a Jew, so I grew up eating burgers and barbecue and bagels and blintzes. You know, it's like the standard American diet, wearing cowboy boots with chutzpah. Um, <laughs> And I had a really great childhood. My dad taught me how to play baseball and football and basketball. And my mom uh, inspired my imagination and taught me to dream. And, and you know, I, I really, you know, I have a twin brother who we took every opportunity to get into trouble as much That's as possible Bobby. growing up. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a younger sister, Jewel, who is literally, you know, she's my Jewel. And, um, but growing up, you know, I was profoundly affected by, by a few things. Um, one is my relationship to food. Um, early on, I, you know, with all the best intentions, you know, I, I felt criticized for wanting to eat, you know, bad food as a kid. And I, over the course of time, began to believe that there must be something inherently broken in me for wanting these foods so badly. And um, I became a closet eater at about age 10. And I have memories of hiding in my room in the dark in the corner, eating alone because I was afraid of being seen. That if anyone saw me, they would then know that I was broken. And... um At about the same time, I was taken to a doctor and diagnosed with ADHD, and I was put on Ritalin. Uh, And to me, that was just further confirmation that there was more about me that was broken. There was something else now about me that the rest of the world didn't agree with, and this doctor essentially was saying, as long as you take a pill, no one will ever know. Everything is good. And from that point on, my idea of how to fix myself came from a substance. And by the time I was in high school... Um, I was a little bit overweight. I didn't have a lot of friends and I had my prescription had changed to Adderall. And I remember the first time I used Adderall as recreational drug at a party. Boom. That was it. I was hooked and not to the substance, but to what it did for me. It magically fixed everything that I thought was wrong with me. And it made me the person that I thought everyone else wanted me to be. It's an amphetamine, so I lost the weight. Um, I was the life of the party. I had loads of energy. Uh, I was making friends. My relationship with my dad was struggling at the time. Uh, And my dad is very much a type A personality, and I'm not. But when I'm on a lot of Adderall, I act as if I am. And I thought, all right, now I can connect with my dad. And I can be the person that I thought I had to be to make everyone else like me, regardless of how I felt about myself. And in college, it got out of control. And it was never enough. And then never enough became the most important. You mean the Ritalin was never enough? The Adderall was the never Adderall, enough. The Adderall, sorry. Yeah. Adderall my, was never My addiction just got so out of control. And my, every day, my, my biggest concern was how much do I have left? How long will it last? Where will I get more? How much will it cost? And I dropped out of college as a sophomore and I became a criminal drug addict. Um, I was doctor shopping. I was forging prescriptions. I was stealing from people. I was buying and selling on the street. I was treating my family like absolute garbage. I would only see them to get money or things from them or just to constantly blame them or shame them for everything that was wrong in my life. Um, I became incredibly incredibly isolated and developed a a secondary addiction to fast food where I would get up every single day and I would go to a place called Torchy's Tacos and I would get four breakfast tacos, potato, egg, and cheese. Then I'd go to McDonald's and get two supersized double quarter pounder meals. Um, then I'd go to Whataburger and get the extra large honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich meal. Then for dinner, I'd order an extra large pizza from Papa John's with beef on top and a side of the chicken strips. Then at about three in the morning, I would go back to Whataburger for three other breakfast on a bun sandwiches with sausage. I would typically drink about 15 sodas a day. And when I say I had an addiction to Adderall, the average prescription for Adderall is about 20 milligrams a day. That's your typical dosage. The last five or so years of my addiction, I was doing 450 milligrams in a 24-hour period. I wouldn't sleep for six days. I would enter a drug-induced psychosis by about day four, day five. And in order to get myself out of it, 
and finally convince myself to go to sleep, I would have to pop pain pillar, pain painkillers in order to do that because I had no idea what was going on. I was hallucinating all the time. I, you know, I would say things that didn't make sense, or I would just ramble nonsense, and I would have to, uh, you know, I'd have to get out of that with painkillers. And my life was just spiraling out of control, and um, I started living like a hoarder. And nothing, nothing I did was ever making a difference. And luckily, my dad, who never gives up on me, and came to me and said, "Adam, you know, I have an opportunity for you. I'd like to send you to this event hosted by Rip Esselstyn." And I went to this event. And I learned how, if I adopt a plant-based diet, I can reverse chronic Western disease. And I listened to everything that was being said, but I didn't care about it. Mm-hmm. I was just, it wasn't, I wasn't ready. And they had a speaker that night who talked about. He was a motivational speaker. And he talked about his struggles as addiction, with addiction, and and how he treated people and how he moved through the world. And I wanted it to be my night to admit to people that I needed help, but it wasn't. And um, about two years later, I would come home from shopping at a place called Casual Mail XL, and I'd stare at myself in the mirror and I'd take my shirt off and I'd like ritualistically beat myself. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.